we're going to talk about pain expected, pain pathway of mastectomy, and multimodal analgesia with or without regional anesthesia. So we know that um, we saw there that one factor was that the pain is minimal, but uh, we know from studies that it's inadequate in over one third of patients in the first 10 postoperative days after breast surgery. So it's not quite uh, true that it's minimal. Um, and that, this understandably uh, causes fear for patients because they hear stories, right? And there's an association as well between the acute uh, pain and the chronic post surgical pain. Uh, so this is a modifiable target for uh, renal anesthesia, which we can, we can uh, help. And basically the chronic problems that are developed are the paresthesia, uh, intercostal brachial neurology, and phantom breast pain. Actually, there's a study the surgeons are doing um, by trying to do uh, intercostal brachial preservative surgery when they work in the axilla. It's a trial that they're running right now. So it was assessed in ISURA. So the pain pathway, uh, pretty, very quickly. So we have between six, C5 and T6. So we can see it's quite extensive and it includes the intercostal nerves, but also the long thoracic, the lateral pectoral, medial pectoral and thoracodorsal, and also the superficial uh, cervical plexus. So we can see the contribution here of the supraclavicular nerves, which go uh, towards the clavicle and a bit beyond. So that would innervate the upper quadrants of the, of the breast. The intercostal nerves, of course. And this is the path that the intercostal nerves take. They, um, they come out of the intervertebral foramen and the spinal nerves divide into two rami, of course, uh, the posterior one which is relevant for uh, spine surgery, and the ventral rami that goes all the way between the intercostal uh, internal muscle and the innermost intercostal muscle. And then it divides uh, in the lateral chest wall and, and generates the lateral cutaneous branch and keeps going forward, uh, becoming the um, anterior uh, branch. So there's many blocks that we can do at different points to catch the, all these nerves. And this is the other component, the brachial plexus. We can see here the uh, long thoracic nerve, the upper scap uh, the medial pectoral nerve and thoracodorsal nerve, and the lateral, lateral pectoral nerves. So multimodal analgesia with or without regional. So we could do uh, an epidural as in the past was done, which is not so common now. We could do a paravertebral block, which is very popular, but uh, people are scared of complications for this, this block. We can do an ESP, an MTP, and in the lateral uh, chest wall, we could do a serratus anterior block, which would catch, of course, the lateral cutaneous branch as well. And there's the anterior blocks, uh, the pecto intercostal facial block, and this, the field blocks, PEX1 and PEX2. So let's see some, some, uh, some data. Uh, I'm gonna present the systematic reviews and uh, meta-analysis that I found. Uh, July, 2020, it says electrospiny block versus no block, but that would be with systemic analgesia. The electrospiny plane block is more effective at reducing post-operative opiate consumption by 21.55 morphine equivalents a day. And the pain scores up to 24 hours. 1.63 in the visual analog scale in the first six hours, which is um, which is an, inter an interesting amount. Not huge, but it's a contributing, contributing amount. The opioid consumption was reduced from six, uh, 44 to six, and 100% to 15% in the early recovery period, and nausea and vomiting, 80, 18% versus 31. Also, there's another other studies included in this meta-analysis, which talked about uh, satisfaction, quality of recovery score, lower mean discharge times. The, the ESP is similar to the paravertebral block per the study, and although it's inferior to the PEX block, which of course uh, 
would cover uh, other uh, nerves arriving at the area from different sources, as we discussed before. This systematic review said that the facial plane blocks would be simpler and safer than the paraparatival block. The previous one said it's similar, and they say it's safer. This is November 2020. And also that the ESP block is uh, simple because of its landmarks, uh, decreased proximity to vital structures, and there might be a potential activity, of course, in the anticoagulated patient. And then uh, added to the factors that we already know about opioid uh, consumption and pain quality and notion vomiting, this uh, echoes the same information and it adds complications. None were found per eight studies. So uh, this study is, is, is title is statistically significant, but clinically unimportant. It's a quite strong statement. So my question is, what's not clinically important? Uh, it could be 1.6, right? But how much, how much good is good enough for us? And if it's not a risky procedure um, and it helps the patient, and why not, why not do it, right? It, it contributes to the multimodal analgesia. And blocks should be analyzed, analyzed separately as part of the multimodal uh, group of measures, not alone, of course. And also this study um, is very heterogeneous. It considers all types of breast tumor resections, not only mastectomies. And our project here would be only mastectomies. So the, the, it, it should be able to help more than the, these results. And these uh, trials were small, less than 50 patients and RCTs were still needed by then. The PEX block supported by consistent level one evidence at that moment, they said, and algesa to entire breast and axilla is acquired by the PEX block. So then this uh, systematic review meta-analysis, February now 21, uh, opioid consumption again, visual animal uh, scale um, score, uh, it's although uh, lower, uh, this included some RCTs, uh, so it's more uh, trustable but uh, it's still heterogeneous because nine of these RCTs uh, were done in modified, were, were done in modified radical mastectomy, okay? But other two uh, included sentinel lymph node biopsy and three axillary lymph node uh, dissection. So there's a lot of heterogeneity uh, uh, between these cases, some that cause more pain, some that cause less pain, not specifically the most uh, painful uh, surgeries. So then we have this one, six, April 16, 21, and it adds that it should be the standard criterion in breast surgery for, for them, and that future research should uh, focus on paravertebral blocks uh, uh, with uh, facial plane blocks in terms of complications, side effects, and compare them. So the ESP block uh, will be done uh, in the plane that's uh, anterior to the erector spiny muscles, and they would block the posterior rami, as we see here. And uh, also we think it blocks the, the ventral rami. Uh, but this subject is still uh, under uh, controversy and the, in the Isura Congress uh, the last weekend, it was very controversial between uh, the um, uh, anatomists and the clinicians. So uh, one, Dr. Morgigle, Morgigle said that uh, he doesn't think that this block provides uh, the block of the ventral rami. He thinks it's only a uh, system, systemic absorption. And then the Dr. Kijin's um, Chin uh, papers uh, show dye, dye spread to their ventral rami. Uh, and we have uh, clinical experience with it. We see it works. There's a lot of systematic reviews. So uh, it, it seems like it really works and helps, uh, but this is a, a still under uh, continuous study, but it's mostly um, agreed that it helps. So uh, this would be the block. Uh, this is a catheter that I put in a patient, two uh, catheters, because this patient had some uh, coagulation normality and I was asked to put an epidural. So I just put two ESPs there and she felt very comfortable. And this is the SP, the needle is going uh, under the spiny muscle over the TP of the process. And we see the muscle is uh, lifting with local anesthetic. Okay. 
So this was the educational session. We, uh, to conclude, we uh, said that the pain is inadequate in one third of the patients. We talked about algesia pathways, multimodal analgesia with or without regional anesthesia, which improves the pain levels, opioid consumption, nausea and vomiting, potentially chronic pain and cancer recurrence, which is still under uh, study. And the risk is low, very low.